been three years now for, for us being here. If you're still not getting used to surprises, <laughs> that's your fault. <laughs> or you're, you're just not coming often enough to forget all the surprises. So we are going to start our worship out here today for a very simple reason. <laughs> Thank you to Dan and Rick to look into it, and thank you for Rick for replacing the pump. Um, so it's working again. We still have to work on the splashing. Um, it seems the fire department is worried that people walk by here and slip. Because it's right in our walkway where we walk, right? <laughs> but we, we figured out why, because as we get older, we don't see as well, right? Oh, what is that? We get closer? <laughs> and um, I can say that because I have my glasses here, hearing aids in there. So it's all of us. Good to see you this morning and welcome to Peace Lutheran's atrium today. Um, other than that, we're going to have. Um, a little bit of different music today um, in the worship service later on, and um, other than that, it will be uh, almost a regular service. As you go into the church, please grab a little piece of paper that's handed out there, um, and if necessary, a pen or pencil. Um, and um, as you sit down, if you might want to, please fill it out, pass it to the aisle. And I will ask the ushers to gather those little pieces of paper. They are what? Little pieces of paper that you will get as you go inside. All right then. Let's take a moment to gather ourselves, our hearts to the God who wants to meet us today and who is here to serve us. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who gave us life, who sustains and, and upholds us, who is a fountain of living water, a refreshing well in dry land. Amen. We are gathered here in the front of the cross, where our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ died, so that we may have life. Thanks to you, O Christ. The cross is the symbol that we have been forgiven to whatever has separated us from God or the people around us. It's the place where our shame and guilt have been overcome. The place where we are accepted with our messiness and imperfection. Thanks be to God for the love that flows from the cross. The water running from the cross reminds us that we are reborn through our faith in Jesus Christ. It's a symbol of our death, as our old self has been drowned in the waters of baptism, and we have been raised to a new life. Thanks be to God for making all things new. As these waters flow, we remember the life and joy that we are given by faith in Jesus Christ who stills our thirst for life, who satisfies our inmost being, and that the same life and love is flowing from us to bring life and joy to others. Thanks be to God for giving us a life filled with purpose and love. <coughs> As these waters flow, we are reminded that God's love has no boundaries and is flowing freely to all people of this world. It's a gift that flows from the cross of Christ and makes us God's children. Praise be to God, who loves us and redeems us. Amen. Well, I do invite you now to move into the sanctuary and find your place. You can use both doors.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. God, our Heavenly Father, we, we praise you and thank you for the grace with that you have washed us, made us your children, your sons and your daughters, made us your own through Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection. And as we live from this foundation of your grace and your love, help that we grow in faith, that we grow in confidence that in you we are someone, we are your children, we are the people you have created. And then in all humility, send us out to be messengers of your love. In Jesus' name. Amen. One bill is getting up. One word to... Safina says there were not enough blue or yet green sheets for everybody. Um, so just take the yellow visitor card in front of you. Um, if you're also a visitor um, and want to fill that out, fill out the other side, we'll find it. Um, and the question is, like the, if the sentence starts, I have felt filled with God's love when? Oh, let's just make it shorter. I felt God's love when? And you just finish that sentence. And the ushers, please, gather it before the sermon. Thank you. A reading from Ephesians, third chapter. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and earth takes its name. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power of work with us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. According to John in the sixth chapter. Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the sign that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six month wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of the disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, Oh, there's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, though they sat down about five thousand in all. When Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, 
he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, Gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves, left by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who has come into the world. And Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. <coughs> when evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Do we have some of those papers filled out, please? Maybe I should have told you when I'm going to read from them. <laughs> Which is fine because I'm not going to, I hope you didn't put your name on it. If you don't have to, you don't have to, it's not a ballot. <laughs> not a ballot. And there is no right or wrong answer. Just, just saying. But let me start with reading from some of them, and I probably will not be able to get through all of them, I'm sorry. I have felt filled with Christ's love when I see the wonders of nature, the sky, the beauty of the earth, and all its creatures. Oof, this is hard. Thank you. I have felt God's love when my grandson, dug a grave for our dog, placed her on a blanket, and covered her with love. Oh. I have felt filled with Christ's love when I find the eventual blessing, good joy from disappointing and difficult situations turn out to be blessings. I am surrounded by God, by love, at church, with, and with friends. I felt Christ's love when he healed me. I felt God's love when there were northern lights on a very hard day, when we gave our daughter back to God. I felt with Christ's love when I hear the organ music on a Sunday, greeted by my name and recognized to feel at home and see God's glory in the nature I'm so blessed to dwell with him. When I gather and sing with loving people at church, when I'm in my church, I felt filled with Christ's love when I am in a dark place and feeling blue. When we witnessed this sanctuary being built a long time ago. <clears throat> when I come back and visit peace, and I cannot read the rest. When we all sing hymns together. My when my family's love speaks to me. Gotta take them to put them to the sides, hoping they're falling not down. 
Let me continue with my own, I have felt God's love in my life story. And it might, make, it might sound a little bit weird to, to get there, but I have felt Christ's love in the community that surrounded us as a family when our daughter Sonia died almost three months ago. It, it was right there, God's love in the phone calls, the messages, the cards that we received. Right there was God's love for us. And we felt it, we literally felt it deep inside. It filled my heart with every hug, with everyone just touching me, to assuring me that we are not alone. And also every dinner and dessert that came our way. In this sad and honestly miserable time, when you think God to be the furthest away from you. Through God poured his love into my heart through the love of the people who stood with us, cried with us, and held us up in prayer. And I'm just saying that from the first quotes that I read just now, how many were actually saying similar things like, I am feeling God's love in the community of God's it was not that I was not mad with God. Not that anyone. I was mad with God as well. Okay. well, well, well it was a good balance of being mad and being felt held by God. <coughs> not that I didn't ask why. And why we had to go through this trauma now. <coughs> After all the traumas we already went through. <coughs> After all the traumas we already went through with him. And there's a lot of other whys that go through your head. And yet God surrounded us with love and the love of the people who showed up around us. People just pop up like, I don't know, like mushrooms out of the ground. People we hadn't been connected for years and years. So let me tell you from my own experience. God's love does not have an end. It doesn't end when we feel forlorn. It doesn't end when we are in pain. It doesn't end when our world seems to come to an end. It doesn't end when we are suffering or in distress. It doesn't end when we feel like we're losing it. God's love is wide enough to embrace all people. It's deep enough not to waver, but to stand at our side in joy and pain. God's love is strong enough to endure with us all the way and it's high enough to hold the entire cosmos. Do you remember that Sunday school song? God's love is so wonderful, God's love. You don't know that? No. <laughs> <laughs> so that they, they, there's a German dude that has to come and teach you a Sunday school song? <laughs> okay, it, it's easy, right? It, it just repeat. If God's love is so wonderful, we do God's love, heart, wonderful, clap three times. <laughs> God's love is so wonderful, God's love is so wonderful, God's love is so wonderful, oh wonderful love. Okay, now it goes. So high, you can't get over it, so low. with our kids and it's like this school and I figured that actually it is a English song translated in German. Uh, okay, where were you when Sunday school happened? <laughs> gotcha. We got on our tiptoes and to show how high and spread our arms as wide as we could to show how big and all encompassing God's love is. How can we ever comprehend this love that is so much further, bigger, greater, longer, wider, higher, and deeper than we ever can imagine? How are we supposed to grasp it? Here is Paul praying for us that we understand and we comprehend God's love, and at the same time he's saying, well, 
I know it's beyond all of our understanding. I don't think I ever will. And maybe the only way to react to God's love, this infinite love of God, is actually like Paul is doing, to go onto our knees and praise God for this amazing love. I felt Christ's love when I survived a possible brush with death. When I'm at church. <laughs> Unfinished sentence. <laughs> and I know it is sometimes we, we did that exercise at the Synod Assembly, and they're always like, hey, I don't know what to write. <laughs> I have felt Christ's love when I pray and play. <laughs> when I hold my mother's hand. <laughs> when I'm with my family. When the sun's rays burst through the clouds. <clears throat> I felt God's love through the love of the people God sends in my times of need. Amen. When I sit in this beautiful sanctuary. When I'm with my family and when I'm communing with others. One more, when I help others. Thank you for sharing. Then I'll read some more at the end of the day. Yeah. So many ways how you felt God's love, and I'm not surprised because God's love is it does not exist in a vacuum, right? It, it, like we talk about love, and it always seems like this great philosophical idea of loving others. But actually, it's not just a beautiful idea or concept. Love always only exists in practice and action. God's love only always exists in practice and action. Otherwise, there is no love. I can tell my wife a million times, oh, I love you, honey, I love you, honey, I love you, honey, I love you, honey, and otherwise don't care about her at all, right? If I don't show it practically in my actions, what good is it that I talk about, I love you? Not much of value, right? And it's the same with God's love, which is visible in Christ's love, who gave his life for us, and this love is living among us. It's living among the people who allow this love to take root in them and who are built on the foundation of this love. Christ's incomprehensible love is living among us. The church. His church. And, and, and you know, always when I'm talking about the church, I'm not just meaning it's us and no one else. No, I always talk about Christ's church, which is invisible and spans the globe. But here's the thing Christ's love, God's love lives in this messy, Sometimes glorious and sometimes difficult conglomerate of people who believe in Jesus Christ, who often enough cannot get along and who fight amongst each other. This is the place God has chosen to be present with God's love. This very real and imperfect church with all its failings with all its imperfect saints and sinners sitting in its pews, is filled with the fullness of God's love. That's what Paul is praying for, that we are filled with the fullness of God. And the way he's writing it, it's clear that he talks about the fullness of God in Christ's love to us. You, we, who are rooted and grounded in Christ's love, are filled with the fullness of God. 
kind of hot. And then, and then Sunday we're gonna get you down again from lo our lofty spheres right now. The fullness of God really sounds majestic and powerful, right? Like, oh yeah, we can do everything. And true. But the fullness of God, you always have to remember, it's not just about power or whatever. It's always about the power of love, of God's love, working in us and through us. And you see, you, you kind of have to think, well, why would God choose us as people to be the carriers of his love? Because we're no better or worse than anyone else, right? But here's again the thing. Love does not exist outside of community. Love cannot exist outside of community. <coughs> kind of like it's like, yeah, we can love ourselves, but we always need someone to love, right? It always needs to be someone else. And while we can love ourselves, we also need the love of others. So there needs to be community. And God expresses his love in and through community. Wherever a people are rooted in Christ's love, God comes through with his love and shares that love with the world. God's love is at work when we love and care for one another in every word, every action, gesture, every prayer, every hug. God's love is at work when we show compassion towards others who need our practice love in form of backpack and pencils. You see them outside in the age. In form of a shelter, or food, or counseling, or a shoulder to cry on. What is there in this world that this love cannot change? In the Gospel we heard about the miracle of love that 5,000 were fed with five loaves and two fish. <clears throat> no worries, we're going to have more than five loaves and two fish for potluck today. <laughs> we're not trusting as we should. <laughs> but what can God's love, what is there that God's love cannot transform or change in this world? What is so broken in the world that this love could not mend and heal it? Which situation could be so hopeless that this love wouldn't bring a light of hope? People of God, I don't think we have seen anything so far what God's love can do and will do through us. Be surprised. Kind of to finish with some more of what you wrote. I felt Christ's love when I helped someone in need. Oops, glasses back on. <laughs> when I'm singing God's praise with the congregation. When I'm in worship. When Paul calls me church, I remember. Some people, I'm not going to read any names. <coughs> When I see the nature around me, when he answered my prayers, when I'm having a sad day, he lifts me up and I thank him for his love. When I'm able to assist another person in need of help and feel good afterward. When I read the Bible, when I often think of how great God's love is. <coughs> when family is together. When I'm in church, and when I'm in church, when I was at the church of Holy Sepulchre in, 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 in Israel, in, in, in Jerusalem, I don't know how to say that word in English, and knelt at the place his body was laid, like the resurrection church where like, the cross and the grave are on the two sides. When an old elderly man was walking his dog and the heat of the day, he was struggling from the heat, and so was his dog. A neighbor came to his rescue, escorted him home in a golf, golf cart. God's love in action. 
Isaiah. When I'm lost in unexpected times, when I see the smile of a friend, when guided through long difficult times, I have filled with God's love when I sing I thank God for the gift of music. Let's keep it at that. Um, there are at least 40 others. Um, maybe if I have time, I'm going to put some of it um, in our tidings next week. So I think it would be good to share. Oh, one more thing. Amen. <laughs>
Christian faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. One in the communion of saints and in the power of the Holy Spirit, we join our voices in prayer. God of generations, you work in us far more than we can ask or imagine. Bless the church you have called into being across time and space, and fill it with the power of the Spirit for loving service. In your mercy, God of field and forest, streams and seas, you are the fullness of all things. As grains of wheat grow upon the earth and fish swim in the waters, sustain your creation. Protect harvests and give every person food in due season. In your mercy, hear our prayer. God, beyond borders, you rule all in all. Bless the work of humanitarians and peacekeepers. Shield those who live, work, or serve in harm's way, and bring an end to war and conflict, especially in Ukraine and in Israel and Gaza. In your mercy. God of healing, you open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. We remember any who are sick or suffering, especially Myrna, Luviani, and the families of Alan Gaines, of Diane Ogren, of Margot Schultz, and the Kleist family. And those we remember now out loud or in our hearts. <clears throat> Watch over the families in our community who endure hunger, those who seek asylum or citizenship, and our beloved for whom death is near. In your mercy. God of grace, you root us and ground us in love. As you inspired our ancestors in this place in their ministry, sustain us also in new endeavors that your glory may be made known and your loving kindness shared anew. In your mercy. God of all, your love in Christ surpasses all knowledge. We give thanks for the departed, departed who have come to know the fullness of your grace. Join our voices with theirs and all the saints in singing your praises. In your mercy. God of love, may we comprehend the breath the length, the height, and the depth of the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that we may be filled with all of your fullness and of your love working in us and through us. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, holy and merciful, into your outstretched arms we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray. Trusting in the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We have guests today. Um, Paul and the Papa Um Papa band. It's like Paul, Papa Um Papa. <laughs> I think it must be their names, or to start out their names. Thank you for being here today, um, and 
they, they want us to sing along with Abide With Me 629. 629. You may be seated.
God our Creator, you open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living creature. With these gifts, we bless you for your tender nurture and care. Help us to delight in your will and walk in your ways through Jesus Christ our Lord.
May the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you all in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Well, 207. <laughs> you know it by heart. Yes. 207. Thankful, thankful heart and voices raised.